What's up Thrashers, and welcome back to the Thrash Maniac 99 YouTube channel, and for another episode of the Mosh Pit Reviews, and first off, yes, the beard is gone again, that's because I did a terrible job at trying to trim it a little bit, so I just decided to shave it off, and hopefully it'll grow in better this time. But you know, I've kind of thought about it, maybe the beard's not good enough to go down like this, maybe just keep it at a nice thick layer without it being all curly but beside the point so today for the mosh pit reviews i had two choices one dark throne the other death angel which were the two only two albums that were big enough to be worth talking about today now because i felt like i would be more interested in the dark throne album considering i like what they've done and Death Angel I have a lot of respect for, but not the biggest Death Angel fan, so I went with Dark Throne. So today I am reviewing Dark Throne's new album, Old Star. Now, a little history lesson for those of you who may not be familiar with Dark Throne. Then again, how the hell does anybody not know about Dark Throne? But for those who don't, brief history. Dark Throne formed out of Norway in 1986. And the creative the creative forces behind the band, Fenris and Nocturno Culto. Fenris primarily the drummer, Nocturno Culto the vocalist and guitarist. Now they started out as more of a straight up death metal band, hence the uh, evidenced on their first album, Soul Side Journey, in 1991, and it was very good death metal for Norwegian standards. But then the band decided because they weren't happy with the direction death metal was going in the early 90s, they decided to change up their sound as they were beginning to be really inspired by their peers such as Mayhem, for example, but also deeply influenced by Venom, Merciful Fate, Celtic Frost, Hellhammer, among so many other bands that were in the proto-black metal genre, and decided, you know what? Let's take what those bands did and push it further and really create real black metal. And then in 1992 through 1994, they created the unholy trinity of Norwegian black metal, with A Blaze in the Northern Sky being my personal favorite, Under a Funeral Moon, and Transylvanian Hunger. Then after that, they were gone off Peaceville Records and then joined some indie labels, labels, indie labels to produce future albums. Then in 2006, a sound change happened when they released their album The Cult is Alive. They began to incorporate a lot more crust punk influence into their music, and that would sort of stay on Dark Throne's sound for their next few albums afterwards. And the black metal was starting to go away, and they were becoming more of a crust punk slash traditional heavy metal band in the late 2000s. But then 2013 comes around and they released one of the best albums of 2013 with the Underground Resistance. And it was top of the line traditional old school metal with some speed metal thrown into the mix. And that was an amazing album. Then they return a little bit to their black metal sound on Arctic Thunder, which came out three years ago, which I believe I did a review on. Even though the album was good, it wasn't nearly as good as Underground Resistance, mostly because they decided to go back to that black metal sound and try and combine it with the Underground Resistance, and to me, it just didn't quite mesh well. So how does Old Star hold up? Well, it's only a six-track affair at under 39 minutes, so it's a fairly short album of just six songs, the average length at about nearly six minutes. There's a lot of long tunes on this one, and for reference, all six of these songs from top to bottom have a unique sound to it. The opening track, I Muffle Your Inner Choir, has basically it's more of a continuation almost from Underground Resistance where it was all about the speed and taking influence from the speed metal bands of the 80s like Exciter and Razor, um, Except, a bunch of bands. So that was like the one like ultimate fast, well one of a few ultimate fast songs on the album. But then you get to the second track which was actually 
one of my favorite songs of the album, which was also the first single, The Hardship of the Scots, where you hear the opening riff and you immediately hearken back to ACDC's song, Let Me Put My Love Into You. Dark Throne basically takes that riff, brings new life to it, and make it a lot more darker and sinister, whereas when you hear it from ACDC, it sounds more cheery and more sexualized because of well, the song title being called Let Me Put My Love Into You. Dick jokes! We got him! Anyways, um, Hardship of the Scots first half is like an ultimate doom metal dirge, and then the second half it gets some more in like the traditional heavy metal sense with a little bit of speed thrown into the mix. Then you get to Old Star, the title track, which was the shortest song of the album at about four and a half minutes, kind of was more or less combining the doomy side of the album with the speed. And even a tiny, tiny shred of death metal kind of thrown kind of thrown into the mix. Not because of vocals, but because of perhaps a couple of riffs kind of having that death metal songwriting to it. And I'm talking about early death metal, like early death, necrophagia, morbid angel, where it's a little more tremolo style. Then you get to Alpman, which was more of a straight up doom song. Then Duke of Gloat, which was basically similar to I, Mu I Muffle Your Inner Choir in terms of it being mostly a speed metal tune with a doom moment towards the end. Well, maybe not so much doom, more like a traditional heavy metal sense. And then the key inside the wall was like one of the longest songs of the album at nearly seven and a half minutes. More of that doomy dirge with a couple of gallops kind of like Iron Maiden-esque with a like, bit of galloping riffs with drums in the background going doom -da -doom -da -doom -da -doom. kind of that pattern, similar to say Celtic Frost for example. After all, there is a big Celtic Frost influence on this album. Then again, Celtic Frost has been like a big part of Dark Throne's sound since A Blaze in the Northern Sky. Like they take some, uh, some of the riffing inspirations from Celtic Frost but make riffs of their own or take old riffs but inject new energy into it. Which is sort of the theme of this album where they take an old school sound. So this is almost like a continuation. This whole album is like a continuation of the Underground Resistance but with a little more of the black metal thrown into the mix. Not quite as apparent as it was on Arctic Thunder. The only thing that I think makes this album black metal is in the vocal style being a little bit like that as well as the production value. But then again, Dark Throne does this production value on purpose because they want to have primitive production sounds with a, pr with a primitive setting. So from top to bottom, like I said, each song kind of has its own unique flavor to it. Like the first track, basically a speed metal symphony. Second track, more doom and traditional metal. Then you get to a little bit more of like a mixed match, uh, or a mixed bag of styles. Then you get to song the song uh, Alpman, where it's basically a doom dirge. Then you get glue... Uh, glu uh, what the hell was that song called? Duke of Gloat. Even my brain's not processing my information right right now where it's basically a speed metal tune. Then the closing track, kind of more of a dirge to an extent. So the pretty much the doom aspect was all throughout the album in some way, shape, or form. The speed influence is on the album in certain aspects. Mixed with an old school metal mentality, with a black metal production, and boom, you get this album. So, and another big key thing that I uh, mentioned at brief, the riffs. There are some memorable guitar riffs. Hell, even even though Hardship of the Scots was a tribute to ACDC, I do like playing that riff on my, uh, you can see the headstock right there of my bass. It is such a fun song to jam out to. So overall, does this album hold up on the album of the year list? I'm going to make an argument and say yes, it is an album of the year contender, and this is definitely one I highly recommend to anyone who likes Dark Throne, old school metal of that variety. 
And for that reason, I actually am going to give this album a 37 out of 40. It is such a great album. The only complaint I have is that perhaps I wanted to hear more clean vocals on this album, like on the Underground Resistance from Fenris, because Fenris has a good, solid, clean style that I really, really appreciate. I would have loved to have heard more of that on this album. But then again, Nocturno Cultos... Uh, basically doing a fusion of Tom Warrior of Celtic Frost and Lemmy from Motorhead on this album, meshing those vocal styles together to create something different, was a unique approach. So I give all props to Dark Throne for taking risks, and it paid off in a big way. But does it hold up against Underground Resistance? Not really. It's just barely behind it as far as modern Dark Throne albums is concerned. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, not sure which album next week will I get to review. I might put a poll up. I don't know. It depends on what all is coming out. But thank you for watching. Peace out, and I'll see you soon. And I know Hannah, I know her opinion about this, but I'm sorry. Number four, Ghost Prequel. Screw you! Screw you! Die! <laughs> die! Um, okay. Get out! I um, no, I, I cannot. I cannot continue. I, uh, <laughs> now she's okay. gone. Hannah, I'm sorry. I'm gonna promise. That's my number three. Prequel. You have so, no idea about music. Okay. <laughs>